Hello everybody, this is Jeff Chines. Welcome to our fifth lab exercise on geoprocessing tools. This one we're going to look at the union tool, which actually does some geometric changes to the data. We're also going to learn how to add attribute values to a table. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that. And we're going to create some data that's going to be used in the next lab exercise. So make sure you, you put all this in the right geodatabase. We're starting with the two feature classes we made in Lab Exercise 4. We made two buffer polygons around different types of highway. That's what we're looking at right here. The darker polygons are the quarter mile buffer around the roads that are open to highway legal vehicles year long. And the bigger buffers are one mile buffers around these green roads here, ro roads open to all vehicles year long. All right, so we're going to use the union tool to combine these into a single union feature class. So we've got them loaded into our map already. If you haven't done that already, go ahead and do it now. But first thing we're going to do is add an attribute field to each feature class. We're going to do this so we can see what the union tool does to attribute fields and attribute values when it unions multiple feature classes. All right, let's start with the all vehicles year long. We're going to add an attribute field named all vehicles text. It's be a text field, 50 characters long. So we can just open up the attribute table. Go to add field. This opens up the fields view. Then all ready to add us a new field. We're going to call it all vehicles text. Be a text field and 50 characters long looks good. We save our edits. We can now close the fields view and we see that we have a new attribute field in our feature class. Looking good. All right, now we have to assign a value to it. We're going to use the calculate field function for this. Calculate field, you can, you can get to this by right clicking on the field name, going to the calculate field opens up the calculate field window. Now this tool is fairly complicated. It has lots of options to do code. You can even do code in different languages if you want. All of these code functions are really nice when you want to do some sort of complicated analysis to create values. But we're doing something a lot simpler actually. Um, all we want to do is put this exact value into that record. So we can just copy this, including the quote marks, type it in here, and that will assign the value. Now it's important that it be enclosed in these double quote marks. That's just how this tool works. So we got it written in there. We hit OK. It writes it right in. All looks good. All right, so that's how you use the Calculate Field tool. OK, now let's add an attribute field to the Highway Legal feature class. Add field, open the fields view. This field is going to be called highway legal text. So we just pop that in here. It is a text field as well, 200, just 50 characters long. Save that. All looks good. We can close the fields view. And now we have our new attribute field for this feature class ready to go. We need to add this text to it. All right, so I just copied that. Now, last time we used the calculate field, that was a really good function for calculating attribute values. It gave you all those code functions. It's also a really good way if you have like thousands of records that you need to apply a value to at a single time. If you only have one or two rows or one or two cells that you need to fill, you can actually type right in here. So if you double click on it, just paste our text. That's just a quick way of getting a single value in there. Once we have typed it in, we have to hit the Enter key. That sort of writes it in there. But in this case, we have edited data, and therefore we get our little Edit tab here open, and we have to save our edits in order for it to be written permanently. So I'm going to hit the Save button, and now this value is truly within that feature class. Okay, now both feature classes have now been edited. They both have new attribute values and attribute fields. So we're ready to go to the Union tool. That is in the Analysis. Go to Tools. The Union tool is in the Analysis Tools, and it is in the Overlay Toolbox down here. Just pop that open. 
we need to add both of these feature classes into it. An easy way is to select them both and just drag the pair in there. They both go in. Don't worry about ranks for this analysis. It doesn't really apply. The output feature class is going to be named Roads Union. Copy that out. Just enter this text box and paste it in. We want to confirm it's going into our correct geodatabase because we're going to be turning that in later. Attributes, we're going to include all attributes and gaps are fine in this. So we hit run. Okay, so now we have our union feature class. You can see that it has all the data from the original feature classes all combined into a single feature class. Now we can open up the attribute table. We can take a look at some of this interesting stuff that's happening here. We see we have our two attribute fields that we created for each of the original feature classes. Both of those are included in this new union feature class. We also see the values that we typed in also appear in this feature class. So now notice that uh, these two records have data from the highway legal and those happen to correspond with all features that came from that highway legal feature class. These two, rows two and three, have values from the, the all vehicles, the one mile buffer, the big ones, and so both of these records include data from that feature class. This FID all vehicles year long and FID highway legal year long. These are interesting values as well. These are referring to the object ID values. The FID stands for feature ID, which is the same thing as an object ID value. If we looked at the original feature classes, attributes tables, all vehicles year long has an object ID field. In fact, all feature classes have an object ID field. Sometimes it's called feature ID, but they always had this field here. Highway legal year long has a, the same thing. Now for both of these feature classes, that single polygon in there had an object ID value of one, right? So when you come to the roads union feature class, well, if it has a value of one, let's clear the selection, if it has a value of one, as in this case and in this case, that means that that came from that exact feature from the highway legal. These have one values here for the second and third rows. That means that came from that single feature from the all vehicles year long feature class. If it has a negative one, that means that that portion of this new feature class did not exist in the original all vehicles year long feature class. This one has a negative one here. This particular feature did not exist in the highway legal feature class. It's because it has a feature ID of negative one. If we zoom into this area, we can see different regions of the new union feature class that came from both sources. So exam for example, this polygon right here, that existed in both the all vehicles year long and the highway legal. It's, it's both the quarter mile buffer and the one mile buffer. If we click on that polygon, we see that it has FID values of one for both the source feature classes, and it has all the text we entered for both source feature classes. This polygon here, on the other hand, this clearly only existed in the quarter mile buffers. So if we click on that, we see that it has data from the quarter mile buffers, and it has a op feature ID value of one, but since it didn't occur in the, the one mile buffer, it has a negative one and no text here. Now this region right here clearly only existed in the one mile buffers, so we click on that, and we see, as we expect, it has a negative one and no text when we're talking about the quarter mile buffers, but it does have data from the one mile buffer feature class. All right, and that's how the union tool combines attribute data from all the feature classes that it is unioning. All right, thanks so much, everybody.